Hi everybody, you are watching tutorials. My name is Alex and in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to design this website in Gravity Designer. So we are gonna walk from the scratch and I will show you how to work with the symbols, share styles and, uh, and parent pages in Gravity Designer. So I will show you three basic uh, concepts of the consistent design and a professional workflow here in Gravity Designer. So let's start with the new document Alt N or Option N on your Mac. And I'm gonna size this document with 1920 by uh, let's say uh, 3200 pixels. Click Create. And first of all, let's navigate to the Layer tab and uh, toggle this slider uh, to enable the multi page mode. Then click on this. I can create new page next to the trash icon and create three pages in total. So, uh, first page is our parent page. We can also call it like this parent page. Uh, second page is for our assets. And uh, third page is gonna be our actual design. So three pages parent assets and design and parent will uh, handle uh, two things first a gradient and the grid so let's build a bootstrap grid here in gravity designer i'm gonna walk uh, around the simple grid very basic grid 10 pixels by 10 pixels so head over to the document panel and uh, tune on the grid option and make sure that you have a snap to grid option uh, tuned on. Then grab the rectangle tool or click R and create a rectangle with the, uh, with the width of 70 pixels and height of entire canvas. So, so far so good. I have this uh, rectangle and I want to duplicate it with Ctrl D, Command D. Uh, by default it gives me um, duplicate uh, shifted on the 10 pixels both in bottom and on the right and uh, then I can grab this duplicate and position in the way I want. So I can position it right on three cells to the right. You see it here. And uh, this is where smart transformation started. So next I can control D command D and you see that Gravit would remember my last position of my camera. So I can control D command control D control D command D command D command D on your mark. So I believe I have uh, well enough. I need 12 columns of uh, four then four and four. So I have uh, so far so good. Let's create a new uh, layer group for this column. You need to click on this layer, new layer icon next to the trash icon on the last panel and put it on the last group. The advantage of the last group, first of all, when you have, when you work with the layer group, first of all, you can set up an opacity to all objects at once and also you can align and transform all of them all together so you see this is one of the advantages of the layers group so align it to the middle then i can select all of them holding shift key on my last panel and uh, recolor it degrees the opacity to around 65 pixels and um, next uh, I can let me and next I can for example toggle outline you see to work on the outlines so uh, I want to align it to the center selecting only group align to the center and then lock it on my layer next I want to set the parent page to, to my design page. So let me select my design page, click on the empty spot of your canvas to select your page, 
Make sure the design page is uh, highlighted on your page layers. And uh, head over to the page panel here. And uh, next, uh, go to this uh, drop down next to the master on the bottom of your page panel. And uh, from the drop down, select parent. So you see that all the parent, uh, all the design elements that uh, parent has also resemble on my design page. So this is the main advantage of the parent. First, you do it doesn't interfere with the design uh, with the design elements. I cannot move this grid, but in the same time, in the same time, I can reduplicate the same elements over and over across all of my pages by simply assigning the parent page. So I can also select the parent page for assets, and you see I can bring up the grid. Uh, this way. So far so good, let's also add a gradient uh, background to my parent page. Uh, in order to do this, I'm, I just want to grab the rectangle tool and uh, I can cover all entire canvas with my rectangle and put it on the bottom. Uh, and next I'm gonna navigate to my Okay, to my line or gradient, and I want to rub this gradient here. So in swatches, I should find this gradient. Swatches. Okay, let's apply the gradient. You see, it's also automatically applied to the design page, and I will show you the gradient itself. So on on the left, so it's a uh, Gradient slider, as you can see, it's arranged from top left to bottom right. And on the top left gradient stop, I have DB9579. And on the bottom right gradient stop, I have 151459. Lock this layer as well. And so we have basically our structure so we have our structure our backbone right and we are ready to add some elements so let's select our assets um, page and increase the scale and let's start with the text tool and uh, create some shared style uh, as you may know in graphic designer you can um, create a shared style to pass all of these parameters like color, like uh, kernel properties, line spacing, uh, font size, font family, font weight, and so on and so forth. And you can create it in one style and use it over and over again, apply it to different textual elements on your page. And it uh, helps you to create quickly uh, some titles, some body copy, and maintain the consistency. So let's start with a text tool. Grab the text tool and first give the title. So I'm gonna call it title and I'm gonna work with the open sun slide and uh, the size of 60 pixels. Uh, I want to choose a column and for my title I'm gonna work with the color of uh, 2, 4, e, uh, 1, E, 5, B, 5, B. Uh, click enter to apply this mm, design. So this is the title and uh, now we can uh, create a shared style for the title. And if you have, for example, five titles on the single page, you can simply create uh, one shared style and then select this shared style uh, from your dropdown. So, uh, head over to the appearance panel, to the bottom of appearance panel, and uh, select this uh, drop down next to the next to the style, and go to the create new shared style. I believe this button should be here, this small button with a plus sign. 
uh, I have no clue why a graphic designer team decided to put it inside the uh, drop down. I think it's a uh, increase the time of uh, uh, for you to process uh, this operation of creating new shared style. So let's uh, create a new shared style. I'm gonna uh, give it a name title. Make sure that the text is tuned on this feature and click create. Next I'm gonna duplicate by uh, dragging and holding uh, alt key or option on your mark and create a, a style for meta. Uh, this time I, I'm gonna be working with a uh, uh, open sun slide but uh, with a size of uh, 16 pixels first of all and uh, change the color I change the color to uh, this uh, B17972 uh, click apply and create a new shared style so let's go and create new shared style call it meta Click create. So far so good. Let's uh, duplicate another um, time this uh, title textual element. And uh, this time I'm gonna work with the body copy. And for body copy I want to something distinct. I want to create a body copy with Miriam Lieber. Set it to regular and with a size of 24 pixels. I also want to increase the line spacing of the body copy to 125% and change the font color. Uh, in this time I'm gonna be working with the 37, 37, 37. Uh, click enter to apply the changes. Let's go again to the style and create new shared style. Set it to body and click create. Let's also create a material share style. In order to do this, grab a rectangle or click R, create a rectangle and uh, set the field to white and keep it selected and navigate to drop shadow. Click plus sign to create a new drop shadow effect. Set the value of Y to 7, set the to cast to the bottom, set the uh, value of x uh, to 2 and um, value of blue to mm, let's say 30. Uh, decrease the opacity to 35. So uh, it's my uh, definition of material, uh, you can uh, have your own. Let's create a new shared style, call it material. As you can see, uh, gravity is pretty small, so it recognizes this object contains no uh, textual elements, so you can the text is automatically tuned off, and click create. Next, let's uh, play with some symbols, I believe, and uh, in order to obtain the control over the symbols, you need to head over to the symbol stop first of all, activate the symbol stop, you see it's appear on the pink, and um, next cl click on this plus sign next to the trash icon uh, to bring up the create new symbol dialog box and uh, give it a name. I'm gonna work with the button. It's my general button. You can create uh, several options for the button. For example, button small, button uh, medium and button large, button default, button warning and so on. So you can bring uh, the whole framework uh, in, inside the gravity. Yes, um, it would be really nice. Uh, but uh, well, uh, before, of course, before creating the symbol, because uh, I just create a symbol material rectangle, I want to create first of all button let me bring up a button from here ctrl c ctrl v or command c command v on your mark oh, as you can see it uh, looks so uh, very stylish here uh, so let's uh, now le recreate this button i'm gonna walk with the rectangle and uh, give it a uh, 100 
pixels of height. I also want to pick up the color here, duplicate this rectangle and uh, well, on my last panel I want to select the original one and put it on 5 uh, to 6 pixels on the bottom. Then grab the or obtain the control over the fill and decrease the brightness sli slightly. Go to the text and type, let's say, submit. I am working with the all. Uh, I am working with the uh, all capital letters, as you can see. And uh, then I can control the size of my text. Uh, 36 pixels and, uh, of course, Open Sans and uh, regular or light. Let's say light, make it white and align these uh, elements. Um, first of all, select and uh, Ctrl G, Command G uh, to group the rectangles. Select both rectangles by drawing my key and then uh, align to this group with this group the submit button itself. So uh, this is a small button, let's go and select the first uh, rectangle in the group, the top rectangle, and give it also a um, grain effect. So let's go to the effects, more, and uh, from the more use adjust, select the adjust, and then add the noise. Reduce the number of noise to, okay, 1 or 0.1, yep. And now keep it selected, uh, keep selected everything and go to the symbols and create a new symbol. Call it button. Uh, I'm gonna marquee it with a submit also. Button submit, click OK. And also I want to delete this, this symbol. So let's go to our design. We basically ready to design something. Last but not least, of course, I can show you how to create this uh, this um, arrow buttons itself. So let's take a look how to create the arrow buttons. Uh, grab the rectangle tool and create a perfect square by holding Alt and Option on the Shift key. Uh, basically, you need to hold only a Shift key but I also uh, hold Alt to draw from the center and set the, uh, this, uh, the size to 50 pixels. So you see uh, the size here. Uh, then uh, set the color to almost black, um, around 2, 6, uh, 2, 3, 2, 3. And so the, uh, let's create triangle and place this triangle horizontally. So it's point to the right. Uh, delete the fill and uh, add the border, set it to white and increase the border weight um, to around 3. Click plus sign and then Ctrl Shift P, Command Shift P to create, uh, to make a path in order to control every single uh, point of your design. You can also go to the modify path and convert to path here. Then holding shift key select the point in the, inside the rectangle, the uh, triangle and uh, click delete to delete these unnecessary points. Then select the um, either top or bottom uh, point and uh, head over to the modified path and break the curve. Uh, I wish I have a shortcut for this transformation, so break curve. And then uh, set the appearance to to unclosed. Uh, in order to do this, uncheck this closed uh, checkbox. Now you can have full control of this open pass point. Uh, but I can, uh, I do not uh, want to move it. Anyway, I want to delete it it's, uh, at all. So I have select the grab the point tool. And uh, then let's align it uh, to the middle, this time uh, right here. Well, uh, it's uh, 
would be nice to add also a shadow in this case i mean a long shadow set the length to around uh, three so small uh, small long shadow it will add uh, a nice design you can uh, walk uh, on your own let's grab the whole design cell uh, Control G, Command G to group it and uh, create a new symbol again. This time I'm gonna talk about arrow. So now let's bring up everything all together uh, and build our site. Let's start by uh, grabbing, uh, obtaining the control over the rulers. To show the rulers, Control Alt R or Command Option R, and then uh, grab this uh, horizontal ruler and position it at the distance of 100 pixels. Let me uh, scale and focus on this uh, ruler itself. Um, then I'm gonna walk with a uh, text tool and uh, set a couple of elements about well we can uh, start with a body copy then hold alt and drag to duplicate portfolio portfolio and last scene, last item is uh, contact. And again, just a matter of taste to create also uh, these lines, these dividers in between of your uh, items. Okay, uh, we built a very basic uh, menu, and uh, next I'm gonna work with a uh, actual name um, with the name of this uh, architect but before I do this um, I highly encourage you guys to select everything here create a new last group put inside the group and call it menu first it uh, slims down your um, last panel and next uh, it's um, help you to navigate uh, throughout uh, all of your elements Let's go next and create this uh, Richard Dolphin and then uh, engineer and architect. And uh, I'm gonna be working uh, with a font called Monotone. So uh, first of all, let's create, give it a name, Dolphin. Gravity doesn't have a capitalize option, so I cannot capitalize my um, Dolphin name. I need to either click uh, to caps lock or uh, hold the shift while typing my name. So dolphin, and let's go to the monotone. If you experience the same issue, you need to change the size into auto. And now it looks perfect, absolutely perfect for me. And uh, let's apply a gradient. And I'm gonna be working with the same gradient again. As the advantage of Gravity is that you can uh, add any uh, any number of fields uh, to your uh, text. So I'm gonna work in with a fill. And then head over to the gradient and apply this gradient. As you can see, it's just the same as for background. So you can create a swatch and then copy this swatch from the background. Uh, the major, the main secret of this uh, design is the inner uh, drop shadow effect. So. As you can see, it has this drop shadow with the angle of negative 72, length of 32, and a 50% of opacity. Let's apply this uh, shadow effect. Go to the more shadow, long shadow. 
the angle of 72, the distance of 35, and uh, opacity set to 50. Uh, so far so good, as you can see, this uh, gradient is nicely resemble uh, with this uh, long shadow effect and with the uh, monotone font um, itself. Now I want to make some personal touch. A touch. I um, make this dolphin which is uh, uh, supposed to be uh, a second name of uh, my uh, client and I want to make a Richard here uh, like signature uh, that has a very personal touch also. So to denote really that this person also has uh, his own style and also denote his industry. Liner and very strict font a very bold font uh, represents the architecture and now let's mm, let me add his name in a slightly other direction so richard then go and uh, select the font it called damien regular and then give it a color and let's place it here and i want to make it small really small so I hope it makes sense for you. I want to align it uh, vertically. And uh, last I want to uh, give uh, his uh, occupation. So let's say designer and architect. Give it white and uh, uh, open sans light. So we can start with a shared style called title. And then uh, bring up the white color and give it white color. Let's align uh, to the center as well. I want to size down my uh, the occupation. Well, six near the half of the grid is uh, fair enough. And uh, I'm going to be working then uh, with my uh, first panel to represent the case study. But again, before I uh, grab my panel, let's select everything here, create a new layer and put these design elements to the new layer. I'm gonna call it about. Let's go further. Let's create a rectangle. Again, go to the shared style and apply a shared style called material. So you, as you can see, it immediately gives it a drop shadow and a white feel. So very convenient. Then I'm gonna grab another rectangle and position it one column and this gap. So 100 pixels uh, from this uh, parent rectangle and give it width of uh, let's say three columns including the gaps maybe also the three columns and this gap here okay let's uh, just put it on the three columns uh, so far so good uh, it's a background for our thumbnail and uh, i want I do not want to position one material element upon each uh, upon another. Uh, opposed to this, I want to just add a border uh, with one pixels of weight and make it very slightly gray and give it a white key. Next, grab the image. I want to just uh, click and copy this image from my design. Most of the images I grab uh, simply on the from pixels, and other images I grab from the uh, font on the uh, free stocks. Let's align it uh, both horizontally and vertically to the middle. So this image has its own secret. It has an overlay effect. So let's recreate this effect. Go to the 
more, adjust, or lay. Then uh, bring up the color picker and apply just the same gradient as your background. So fill up with the same gradient and then reduce the opacity to 40 pixels, 40%. So we created a thumbnail, it looks decent. Maybe I can just increase it here and here as well. So to make it more. Uh, next, let's uh, add a matte text case and uh, give it a shared style called Meta. Uh, position it here. One column uh, is the beginning of the uh, sixth column of my grid. Let's duplicate the design. Okay, I have some issue with selecting simple and and elegant. Uh, I'm gonna be working with a title shared style, so apply the title shared style. And last but not least, let's create some body copy. In order to do this, first of all, I'm gonna push up my title. Grab the text tool again, create, draw a marquee with the text to fill up the full width of my title. Then uh, type lorem in this box and click spacebar to produce a lorem ipsum. Next, I'm gonna apply the shared style called body. And as you can see, it gives me a lorem ipsum with a 125 line hail. Miriam Lieber of my as my uh, font family regular 24 size uh, just what I needed here I want to increase a little bit and produce a little bit more of my copy now let's focus on the image I believe I need to increase it a little bit more and bring it and uh, push it to the top. So, so far so good. I have a very, very elegant uh, design. Let's create, a, let's grab a symbol from my symbols panel. Just drag uh, and drop to create an instance. This is called a symbols instance. And I want to uh, change a text of my symbol and uh, inside the symbol as you can see on my last panel I want to again realign my text to the symbol and reduce the size for both my text and my button you can then guys uh, change any kind of properties here so you can reduce the text here or give a more gray if you need some. So as you can see, I add more gray and it will resemble, let me uh, go to my, uh, to my last panel. It will resemble to your instant as well. This is how you can quickly change every single design element that is uh, stored in the symbol uh, across all of your uh, designs. Next, I'm gonna build a portfolio field. So, after finishing case study, again, apply the material, create a portfolio holding shift key, uh, then set a title here align this title to the middle of your do document then grab a rectangle and create a rectangle with the width of three columns duplicate this rectangle on this grid maintaining the gap also then grab this uh, 
three elements, group it and uh, align it to the middle as well. Now ungroup these elements, Ctrl Shift G. Again, do not forget guys to select every single element inside the case study, create a new uh, layer group and uh, position them in this layer group, call it keys and return to your portfolio. So, um, I prototype some portfolio items. I need to reduce the height, I believe. Um, increase the padding from the portfolio. And just drag and drop them inside your design. I am going to increase the size of them. Select the rectangle and uh, your image and head over to the clip and apply the clip to clip your image. Do the same with the second image, but before make a duplicate with the Ctrl Shift D Command Shift D, go and clip. And last but not least, oh, position it here. Select the image and rectangle and clip it. So I have some portfolio items. Well, guys, I don't want to focus on this portfolio because, well, it is just a simple task. You can create as much items as you want, and most of them should uh, be created inside a modular grid. As you can see, I accidentally shift all of my backgrounds here. And last but not least, I'm gonna create these testimonials and handle this as a slider. So create another section, give it a material share style, set the created ellipse, give it a gray color to distinguish it from the background. Then go to the any photo you have. I just want to apply my photo. Position it and again select the ellipse and, and clip it. And then I can scale and reposition my photo inside this clipping mask. Then type again, grab the text tool again, type lorem, click space bar to, to create a lorem ipsum text, In graphic designer, let's go to the shared style, apply the body copy shared style, place it here. Um, now let's go to the symbols again, I'm gonna be working with this arrow, so Let's again, again, where is this arrow? Uh, let's issue this arrow by simply dragging it. I accidentally focus on this arrow. So go to the symbols, issue an arrow, then uh, make a duplicate with Ctrl Shift D, Command Shift D, and rotate this arrow. Position it here. So we have this uh, navigation. Let's go further, and further we have our contact form. And this contact form we can create with rectangles and labels. So, create some uh, initial fields. Push it to the top. I'm gonna uh, tighten a bit my design. I'm gonna reduce the vertical margins of my uh, panels. So this is a contact form, very basic, but um, thus it's um, easy to recreate this form. On the web I'm gonna grab the first email and create a first label. Again you can apply shared style, but I can start with some shared style, for example for, with the title and then reduce the size 
hotkey and mail here and reduce the size of it to let's say 24 pixels position a mail here go to the shared style create new shared style call it label click create then copy this design give it a name and message just above the text area give it a white color here so uh, all is perfectly fine and go to the symbols again and uh, bring up this submit button again reduce the size as you can see it has too much grain again you can double click select the surface and reduce the number of uh, noise here I believe uh, 1057 is enough. And let's see what we have. So we have a very classy design. Last but not least, I want to push a bit to the top all of my elements that is below my below my uh, Navigation. In order to do this, I just want to select everything with Ctrl R, and then, okay, I experience some issue. I believe I need to select this area and create a testimonials and place this uh, web uh, to the testimonials group. Then create this uh, contact form or simply contacts and place it here i still have uh, pretty much a lot of uh, elements because i didn't create elements for my portfolio so uh, it's just fine let's select everything except the menu and uh, push it to the top so as you can see it's another advantage of uh, having this uh, less group because it um, uh, helps you to reduce the uh, margins or provide more partings and so on and so forth. So guys, reorganize your layer. At last, uh, let's select the parent page and hide our toggles visibility of your grid. Now let's select our design page and this is what we have in the on the design page. Very glossy website design and in the same um, time it's very unique you can go and preview it play or present and this is how you can present it to the to your client right inside the graphic designer so this is how it looks at the near the natural size and this is how it looks on the web so thank you for watching guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to give it some pop, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends. Um, I, won't, I highly encourage you to visit Vitorials.net for more Gravity Designer and Adobe Illustrator tutorials. Join Gravity Designer Tutorials group, join Gravity Designer Users group and as always, have a great day.